All right, statisticians, today we're going to have another quick mini lesson. Today we're going to really look at what the heck is a p-value. Up to now, we actually even really use the word p-value, but we're going to see that it plays a very important function when we do significance tests, right? And to help us think about that, let's go back to an example we saw from a previous class. Remember when we had this friend who claimed he had a way to die that greatly improved his probability of rolling a six compared to a fair die? And you doubt his claim. Well, okay, he thought that we had this great improvement of a probability, but for us, we just sort of thought that it was a fair die, just like any other die we, we encounter. So we made a null hypothesis, an assumption that this die should be just the same as any other die, and therefore its probability of rolling a six, just like any other, should be one six. However, your friend thinks he's got this fancy die, that where it's greatly improved. And for us, we're not gonna even require that much great. We're just gonna say, do we even have evidence that that your friend can uh, roll a die with the probability being greater than one sixth, right? And so actually in a previous class, we made a 95% confidence interval and we checked to see if one sixth was in it and we used that to make a decision in this situation. Today, we're gonna take a look at how we could potentially calculate something called a p-value to evaluate some evidence. And what we saw, remember, that in a sample, he observed a, a six 19 times out of 80. That gave him a p-hat of 1980ths, which uh, if we were to calculate it was something around 2.2375, uh, if memory serves, let's check. Uh, 19 divided by 80 is 0.2375. So um, that was evidence in favor of the alternative. But remember, our real question is whether this counts as significant evidence. You know, is this sample value so large that it would cause me to reject this fundamental hypothesis I have that in fact, the probability is only one sixth. So to do that, instead of making a confidence interval, let's actually calculate a probability. And let's have a probability that's based on an assumption that our null hypothesis is correct, right? So let's, we're assuming this is true. So if this is true, what's the probability of getting a sample statistic like this? Well, we know that it doesn't make any sense to just look at a statistic in isolation. We need to calculate some kind of uh, probability to put it in context. So to put this in context, let's look at the sampling distribution of p hat. Remember when we talked about sampling distributions? Let's get things in context. Is this particular p hat unusual? Well, we know that the sampling distribution of p hat should be approximately normal so long as the large counts condition is satisfied. And um, that we can check, but that's the case here. We'll, we'll definitely have at least 10 expected successes and 10 expected failures. Then we know that the mean of the sampling distribution should be equal to um, whatever the, the parameter is in our population, in this case, one sixth, right? And the uh, standard deviation of this distribution, remember it had a big fancy calculation that we proved based on the binomial, um, it was one sixth times five sixths divided by our uh, sample size, which was 80. And this would give us some context in which to think about um, this particular event, right? And so, uh, how far off is this guy? Well, we could try to draw this normal distribution. Um, if I drew the normal distribution, let's see here, blah, 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 blah. That's all right. Um, it has this mean of one sixth and the standard deviation of this guy. So I could put that here. But instead of actually labeling this, standard, this normal distribution um, using these numbers, let me do it uh, in a standardized way. So for instance, if I said, how far off is 0.2375 from um, this mean here relative to the standard deviation, I could calculate a quick z-score. I could do like 0.2375 minus one sixth. And then I could divide that by, well, here's a big old square root, five uh, divided by six times one divided by six divided by 80. And here I got about 1.7. So, okay, that's interesting. Uh, I got a, a Z score of my P hat of about 1.7. So where the heck would 1.7 be relative to here? Well, let's see here. That's one, two, three standard deviations. That would be... Let me get another marker. Let's see here. Uh, a, a, a Z of 1.7 would be right about there. Now I would ask, well, what's the probability that something has a, 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 a Z score of exactly 1.7? Well, uh, the probability that Z would equal 1.7, excuse me, 1.7, uh, or and therefore, which would be the exact same thing as the probability that a P hat would equal 19 out of 80. Well, we know the probability of exactly that is zero, 
because the area under the curve right there is clearly zero. So I'm not going to use the probability of exactly that value to, to, to decide what's uh, significant, what's uh, unusual, what's unlikely to happen by chance. Instead, let me calculate a probability in a particular direction. And just the way that you drew this, you could see it seems logical to think about things in this way. Now, why am I thinking to the right? It's not just because the Z is over there. It's because, remember, that's the direction that I cared about. Our, my uh, alternative was saying that P is greater than 1 6. So let's think about this particular value or greater. And the idea is any particular P hat and the Z score you would get for any of those P hats, um, those P hats should be at least as unusual as the one that I actually encountered in my sample they would have to be at least as crazy as the things that I saw. So if I looked at the probability of what I found or things that are supposed to be even crazier than it, that would give me something interesting to put this little uh, sample statistic in context. So to calculate this probability, we could just use normal CDF, right? And for the for the E, since I already calculated a Z-score, instead of plugging in all these crazy values, let me just use the Z-score. I can give um, second VARs. I'll go to uh, normal CDF. And uh, I got a bunch of junk in here. So let me see that my lower bound is 1.7. My upper bound is like positive infinity. Let's say I take a mean of zero, a standard deviation of one. Let's calculate that. And I got um, that this area is, if you can see that, uh, let me move this up a little bit. This area is zero point, uh, take it off screen, zero, four, five, six. Um, actually, I guess I should round that up to a seven. That doesn't really matter. When you look at that, you say, is this a large probability? Is 0.457, I can't even see that. Why did I even try to, I'm trying to make it a little bolder. This black marker stinks. Anyway, that's not helping. But is this a high probability? Well, from previous classes, we even said, what would be a good boundary value for a probability that's really, really low? And we have often used 5% is a probability that's really, really low. In this case, we could say, well, the probability of, 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 of our friend getting uh, 19 out of 80 times, getting a six, or getting something even more extreme than that, uh, well, the probability of, of that event was, is very, very low. It's only 4.5, 4.6%. And that might give me significant, in that reason, I might have reason to say that is significant evidence against my null hypothesis. That my friend, in fact, did do something that seems pretty unlikely by chance. And so in this case, in this method, I might say that I, oh, markers, that marker's done. I might say that I reject the null hypothesis since the p-value and that's actually what we calculate right here. This is actually a p-value, um, is very low. Now, of course, very low sounds very subjective. What counts as a low enough? Well, in this case, we might say since it's lower than 5%. And just to let you know, the special name we have for that boundary, right, is something that's called the level of significance. So, uh, which we usually represent significance. We usually represent the level of significance with the Greek letter alpha. And we could say in this case, if our level of significance was 0.05, then we would reject the null hypothesis because the p-value is in fact lower than 5%, right? So let, let, this was just a specific example where we calculated a p-value. Let's generalize the idea. What was the fundamental idea of the p-value? Well, once again, it involved calculating a probability, a probability that was in fact conditional. It was based on the assumption that the null hypothesis is true. We calculated it based on a sampling distribution on that null hypothesis, right? And we always did it by a tail. We can't just look at a particular value and it's lonesome. We have to look at the probability of a value like that or even more extreme in the direction of the alternative. And that is actually the definition of a p-value, right? So what is a p-value? It's the probability that a statistic will take a value at least as extreme in the direction of the alternative hypothesis as the one we really observed, given that all hypothesis is true, right? The statistic in this case we calculated was uh, p hat, right? The direction of our alternative, remember the direction of our alternative was greater than, right? And we looked at things that were at least as extreme as that p hat. So we calculated the probability that p hat would be greater than 19 80ths. But notice that it was given the null hypothesis is true. So this was a conditional probability given that P actually is one sixth, right? And so those are those key ideas. Our P value is always a tail probability. 
We can't calculate a p-value just based on looking at the probability of a particular value because the probability of any particular value, if it's not zero in a continuous distribution, it'll eventually approximate zero whenever our sample sizes get large enough. Like so if n equals a big number, even in a discrete distribution, the probability of particular values tends to tends towards zero, right? Um, so we'll calculate a probability in a useful direction, and the useful direction we're going to talk about is whatever all alter alternative says. It's always going to be a conditional probability, and we're not necessarily certain that this is the probability given that sample statistic. It's just what the probability would be would be if the H naught is true. And then finally, it's based on a sampling distribution. And so all that math that we learned about sampling distributions is going to be essential here when we do our calculations. Okay, So this was a very informal process, just doing a quick example of a p-value. I hope you learned something. We will do more formal significance tests and uh, where we more formally check conditions and go into um, some more of these details and talk about level of significance in great, greater detail and an, another time as well, too. You might be wondering from my students why we actually ended up rejecting the null hypothesis here. Here. And well, on another situation, we might fail to reject it. Well, we'll examine that exact question in another video. So have um, a beautiful day and giddy up.